Hey gang, in this episode, should be relatively quick, we've just got a few finishing touches to do for the meat wagon. Uh, it's coming together well, you can see the finished product there. Uh, we're just going to dirty up the metal bits, we'll finish up the trim, so that's some of the brass and other steely looking parts. We're going to add some accents, like dirt and mud, to the treads and the base of the dozer blade, and uh, we should probably finish putting the thing together, so we'll uh, paint up the guns, glue them on, and glue on the front blade, and we'll call this project done. This is zero to forty K. So we have all this steel work, all the chains, uh, wheelie things, gears, bits on the sides, and it's a, a relatively large size of, uh, or a large amount of the side faces of the model. And you always want to take, especially with something larger like this, um, it took me a lot of time spinning it around to just see how much detail was in there. So I'm using some of this Viejo uh, black wash on everything that is that shiny steel color, and it just takes everything down a notch. Now on some of my other models, I like just gored out with crazy amounts of rust and effects and things like that. On this one, we're taking a little bit lighter approach because this is a, a plague burst crawler that my army's taken pretty decent care of. Now right here, we're just uh, finishing up all the spots that still need warp lock bronze. For this model, a lot of them are uh, the larger round faces of trim, so those two long strips uh, over where the treads are, uh, the two large wheels uh, that change the elevation of the mortar, things like that. And some of the trim on the side you can see there too. There's plenty of space uh, on the front of the dozer blade. This is a super huge important part of this model because uh, when you're staring, staring this model straight in the face you get this entire plate in front of you. Uh, so I'm trying to be super careful here. I've already done all the uh, meteor work um, and so, yeah, this is just a bunch of bronze trim. It's going to look really good uh, with that lead belcher as sort of a contrast. Um, so, yeah, I'm just taking my time at this spot. There's also some skulls that I'm going to fill in later. Uh, if I had to guess, those would probably get Wraith Bone and Seraphim Sepia because that's kind of my jam. Uh, but just as a side comment, this is like some of the most straight angled painting I've gotten to do this entire time because most Death Guard stuff is so asymmetrical and there's no straight lines in it. So I found myself while painting here just like <laughs> enjoying the simplicity of, of actually painting straight lines and being able to keep within the lines pretty easily. So on this step, I'm really just trying to take these treads down from their original black, from the, the cast black priming spray that I did. It isn't too important, uh, kind of any extra brown you've got lying around will likely do, something that you either use for pouches or belts or stuff like that. Uh, the main point here is, is I want a, a decent base coat for when the, uh, the dirt stuff goes on it. So the poor little guns have been sitting off to the side, primed this whole time. It was, uh, it was about time to give them some love. Uh, they're relatively easy to paint. They have a lot of nice like ribbing on them that gives them texture. Uh, so I'm, I'm just hitting them with the same sort of meat treatment on a few little spots. Then they'll get some metal. Uh, then they'll get some wash. And it's that simple.
one of my favorite parts of the process is adding rust effects. Uh, I'm using uh, a piece of uh, craft board, this tiny piece uh, to put the paint on. Uh, it doesn't soak through at all, so you kind of, you don't lose too much of it. You can actually watch though when this is sped up, um, you, you know, you dab a circle, you dab another circle to get some more paint off, you dab another one, you dab another one until it seems like it's reasonably dried up. And then if you need to grab a little bit more, you shouldn't always have to go back to that first dollop. You can kind of go back to the well in sequence uh, of the dabs that you made. But you can actually kind of watch it dry um, in real time, and then I sort of add another dab to it. It's it's pretty interesting. Uh, but I find this method to just be the easiest way for me. Um, yeah. I'll just let you watch. Now I thought it might be a cool idea, and you can see little evidence of that here, of like, okay, well we've got the blood sort of coming out of these pockmark things. I'm gonna add some like greens and browns to make it look super festering. And I did it, and I looked at it, I said, you know, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, a lot of times I'm struggling to find contrast in what I'm doing, but as I'm putting this crazy green in there, it's starting to feel like a little too much Christmas. Uh, it's just not working with the whole general scheme. Uh, so I, I'm actually somewhat proud of myself. I showed a little bit of restraint and I was like, uh, yeah, I don't like it. I'm going to not do it. <laughs> so before everything dried up, I just got in there with a towel and said, you know, I think this guy's good. It still needs some grime to come out of those sort of bolts uh, that are in there. So it looks a little bit weathered and gets a little bit of, of, of darkness in there. But you'll see that I'm going to do that right here. I'm just going to take a tiny brush. I'm going to dab those little things that are like bolts and those little creases, uh, little bendy places in there. This is really all it needed. Is it uh, that green? Yeah, it just wasn't doing it for me. This is my first time using this basing material. It's from Viejo. It's, I think it's a line called Diorama FX. Uh, and it's just an earth texture, but man, was I pleased with this. Uh, obviously, this brush is, is doomed for all eternity to just be doing t t weird dirt. Uh, but the, the texture of the dirt, the ability to paint with it, it was super easy to do and felt really good. Um, so now, you know, what we get out of this is this... I mean, in my opinion, cool looking tank uh, that stays relatively shiny with a little bit of rust, but it's got that dirt to sort of ground it, pardon the pun, and make it look like it belongs in the environment. Gang, that's a wrap. Uh, it started with just some sort of weird, wild idea, and lo and behold, here we are. Uh, I'm very pleased with this. I'm psyched that I decided to take the plunge and do something a little bit different. It's a unique looking tank. I'm going to get two more Plague Burst crawlers and probably do them very traditional so that they sort of fit in line with those Plague Marines that I've got. But this one as a nice little centerpiece, uh, maybe as a distraction um, or a vanity piece, really. I I'm very psyched with it. Uh, so uh, I hope you had fun. Thanks a lot for hanging out. And uh, that's a wrap on the Meat Wagon. Goodbye.